Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. This will be the first of a series of videos on the finite element method. Now to start off, we're going to use a very simple element to dive into the finite element method, and that is the 1D spring element. So we're going to start from the concept of the spring and move towards the end result of a finite element that we can use in some calculations. So we all know the basics of how a spring works. If we have a spring and we apply some forces to that spring, the result is going to be some change in length. And we can calculate the force based on some spring constant multiplied by that change in length. Now what we want to do is take this concept and generalize it so we can apply it to any geometry. Let's look at our spring, but now we're going to compare it to a x-axis. And what this does for us is it allows us to go ahead and define the position of these nodes, the two endpoints of our spring. So we're going to call these two endpoints x1 and x2. Now at this point, we haven't applied any forces yet, and so this is going to be the undeformed state of the spring. Now once we apply some forces, this is going to move. And so let's say that we see it move both to the right and stretch. Now we're going to have new positions of these two nodes, which we'll list as x1 prime and x2 prime. These have moved because of some forces. We're going to call those forces f1 and f2. Now, both of these are going to be pointed to the right. That's different than what we wrote over here, but this is going to make our life easier whenever we get to more complicated problems. And of course, this is the deformed state of the spring. Now, let's use this geometry to expand our equation for a spring. To start off, we need the length of these two elements because we need to see the change between them. <clears throat> We're going to define L and L prime as the undeformed and deformed lengths. Putting that into the equation, we end up with K multiplied by L prime minus L. Now we can expand this out further. L prime becomes x2 prime minus x1 prime, and L becomes x2 minus x1. Now, I'm going to rearrange these because I'm interested in something called the nodal displacement. U is going to be x prime minus x, and we could put any of the subscripts there, but the basic idea is that the displacement is simply the deformed position minus the original position. So if I want to get x2 prime minus x2, I can just move that over and then move the x1 prime over as well. And so I end up with k x2 prime minus x2 minus k x1 prime minus x1. And so we end up with k times u2 minus k times u1. And again, u is known as the nodal displacement. So this next step is going to be a little unintuitive because we're going to take this one equation and actually create two equations out of it by looking at our two separate forces. So our F1 here is simply equal to negative F since we are looking at a tensile force and F1 is a compressive force. F2 is equal to positive F because they're both tensile. So using these two definitions, we can write two equations, the first of which says that F1 is equal to K times, and this is equal to negative F, so we have an extra negative sign here. So this would be U1 minus U2. And then F2 is just equal to F, and so we'll end up with exactly the right-hand side, or U2 minus U1. Now, we're going to take these two equations, and we're going to rewrite them in matrix form. Everything we do in finite element analysis is based off of the matrix form of the equations. And so we're going to end up with a vector of forces, which is going to be equal to a stiffness matrix multiplied by a vector of displacements. And of course, we can multiply this out and we end up with exactly what we have over here. Oftentimes, just to simplify, but if we have complex situations, we'll say something along the lines of, we have a force vector written like so, which is equal to a stiffness matrix 
multiplied by a displacement vector. So this is just a shorthand way of writing out all of this. And oftentimes we'll have to expand out our stiffness matrix and most of the work in the finite element method is defining this stiffness matrix. So what we have here is working for a single spring. In the next video, we're going to be adding multiple springs together and show you how to build our basic equations using multiple springs and multiple stiffness matrices. Finishing up the terminology here, this is our force vector. This is our stiffness matrix. And this is our displacement vector. I hope this was informative and we'll be building off of this in the next video.